Town Board to order on this 18th day of May 2023. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Sunday, would you call the roll? Certainly. Supervisor Schneiderman. I'm here. Councilwoman McNamara. Here. Councilman Martell. Here. Councilman Bouvier. Here. Councilman Schiavone. Present. All right. Good morning, everybody. Let's get started. Um, we're going to begin with reviewing the agenda for the meeting on May 23rd. So I think that's next Tuesday. And that meeting is probably evening. Yeah, it's a 6 p.m. meeting. And we have six public hearings. And that meeting, again, will be hybrid. It'll be here at Town Hall. Uh, first one is a hearing on enforcement action at 1 Squires Pond Road in Hampton Bays for unsanitary uh, condition. Water supply, the tax map number is 900-175-1-4. Second is a hearing to consider the acquisition of lands of four, I'm sorry, K4K LLC located at 381 Flanders Boulevard at Flanders, uh, amending the CPF management and stewardship plan for that property. Third one is a public hearing to consider the adoption of the 2023 CPF pilot plan. <coughs> Number four is a public hearing to consider amending Section 6.5, Penalties for Offenses of Southampton Town Code, Chapter 164, Fire Prevention in order to increase penalties and add a mandatory surcharge. <coughs> Excuse me. Number five, Public Hearing for Supplemental Funding for WQIP for Alwife Creek Stormwater and Restoration Project. And the last one, number six, Public Hearing to Relocate uh, WQIP WQIP funding from Flying Point Comfort Station to Hot Dog Beach Comfort Station. So any, does anybody have any questions about any of the hearings? All right, well, let's move on to the resolutions. We'll start. Uh, John, I guess you have the first one. Town Board Resolution 640 of 2023, uh, authorized reallocation of quick funding uh, from Flying Point Comfort Station to Hot Dog Beach Comfort Station. Okay, so that's following the public hearing on that issue. Um, 666. Um, so my notes say this has to be withdrawn. Now, it's not, I wouldn't be withdrawing it if it hasn't been introduced. Is it already in? It's a table it's resolution, tabled? so you need to withdraw it's it. It's a table resolution. Okay, meeting. so we'll do that on the floor, but it authorizes the supervisor to enter into an agreement with Hayduck Engineering for professional engineering services in connection with the preparation of a feasibility study to service the business district they have to base. So I guess we're not going to um, amend it. We're, a, we have a brand new resolution. There is, it's also in here. It's, yeah. in it's in the packet. Yeah. All right. It's on page 23. So um, I don't know why we're doing it that way, but it's fine. Uh, all right. So uh, Tommy John. Town Board Resolution 682 of 2023. This is a resolution of adoption, amending town code chapter 283 and special events. And uh, we're also getting legal advice in executive session today. Mm -hmm. some are, are there two like this or just one? One. Just one, okay. I know there's some debate about the bill. All right, so I guess we are on page 23, 23 uh, 43411. Authorize the supervisor to enter into an agreement with Hayduck Engineering for professional engineering services in connection with the preparation of a feasibility study to service the business district of the base. So this is the one that we specifically s include the landfill property, correct? Yes. And yes. we mentioned, yes, yeah, the transfer station. Yep, I see it. And, and also other, that yeah. we've already looked at 30 Cemetery Road. So we're looking at other properties. So that's what I think we had wanted to achieve. Um, all right, uh, John. Resolution ID 43420, accept an award, accept award and authorize the supervisor to execute a contract with the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, NYSERDA, just to trans 
just transition program action grant for clean energy. Town Board Resolution 43317. Oops, there you go, John. Yeah, I started 43317. <laughs> You're alphabetical. Uh, Authorize a survey for Pritchard properties located at 339 8 Noyak Road and 146 Old Noyak Road. Town Board Resolution 43358. Authorize supervisor to sign a contract with Blaze Stack Incorporated for the software as a service solution to manage the fire marshal's operations. Town Board Resolution ID 43316, authorized supervisor to sign a contract with GoGov Incorporated, doing business as GoGov to utilize cloud-based software solutions to manage town clerk operations. Town Board Resolution ID 43353, authorized the supervisor to sign an amended contract with Green Velvet Trees for trails maintenance. Um, 43395 authorizes me to sign a contract with uh, Commander Electric for South End to volunteer and or flashing a beacon. Sunday, I'd like to co-sponsor. <coughs> and this is not a traffic light. Yeah, it's not a traffic light. Right? Even though it hangs out in front of the new ambulance barn. Right. It's a full, it's a full light, though. It looks like a traffic yeah. light. Yeah. But it only so goes for red future, if only goes red if there's a fire, if there is funding. Well, there's probably a significant amount of state law on what you hang over on county, yeah. county road, right? You have to stop traffic and let ambulance in and out. Um, so, so we're up, uh, I guess, Cindy, you're next. Town Board Resolution ID 43310, authorize the purchase of motor fuels from the Alnia Partners Cooperative Contract with Truman Arnold Companies. Uh, the next one, 43398, uh, authorizes me to execute a 23, 2023 service and maintenance agreement with Best Climate Control for maintenance and service on the air conditioning and heating equipment at Southampton Police Department. Town Board Resolution ID 43394, authorizes the supervisor to execute a consulting contract amendment with H2M Architects, Engineers, Land Surveying, and Landscape Architecture, DPC, for rehabilitation of the Bellows Pond Elevated Storage Tank. Town Board Resolution ID 43330, authorize the supervisor to execute a contract with Suffolk County Office for the Aging for expanded in-home services for the elderly. Oh, just hold on a second, just the, the, on the Bellows Pond, we've already rehabilitated it. Um, There was an additional. There was a delay. Additional there was an additional charge. I mean, it's 50 grand. No, what is it? Uh, the second part of the contract. Do we have to increase the amount we're paying H2M? Is that? Mm -hmm. It was a big project. Uh, yeah, I think we had extended their contract at the beginning of the year, and this is just the additional. Yeah, that's what I recall. Yeah. Okay. Four three three nine nine authorizes the supervisor to execute any and all documents pertaining to the twenty twenty three transportation contract at Suffolk <coughs> County Office of the Aging. Um, did we miss one or did I miss one? I don't know. Four three 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 zero. I did that. that. Right. You did that. that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, and then I went. Apologies. I went back one. Town Board Resolution four three four one five to authorize the supervisor to renew an agreement with Eastscope Solution Incorporated for IT services. Four three 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 one authorizes me to sign a con amended contract with Hampton Hopper for shuttle services associated with the South Fork Community Connection. Now that, yeah, that, let's see what this is doing, because I know we're trying to get that Friday bus up and running, mm -hmm. but this I said that this Friday is afternoon. That, this may be Westbound. just the larger bus. It's 350 a day. Second paragraph on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Last whereas. Last whereas, or the cost, oh yeah, this is, so it's got the, Mm -hmm. Friday afternoon westbound, they're calling it shuttle service, but that is, that's going to be the bus sort of that takes people back. 
and then the second westbound afternoons from late May through September. Now I guess we're paying for this. Is it, I don't know if East Hampton's paying anything. It looks like we're <clears throat> there's this. It, it's coming out of the general stow of money that we share with East Hampton. East Hampton shuttle, if needed. Okay. So this, does this also accommodate the larger bus or just the shuttle? I think it's just a Friday afternoon. And are we going to it's, track it's the how lack many people of the are actually using the bus? Was that? Are we going to track how many people are actually using the bus and um, see if it's should, used? Um, yeah, so this allows people then they, to not have to drive to work on Fridays because before they had no way to get back. Now they have a way to get back. But I'm thinking some people traffic, might, if the they have to sit in traffic on the bus, they might just want to drive on Fridays. So I'd just like to see yeah, if we'll it, see. the numbers are. But then they have to, if they have to, if they're going to drive, then they got to drive in the morning. Yeah. So they can avoid the traffic in the morning. And there's just something nice about them. taking a bus home. You can get work done. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Some right. This is, this is not ideal. But uh, when Long Island Railroad uh, instituted the trains between May and September on Friday mornings, there was still no way to get back on Friday af afternoon. So ideally, we want the train to run on Friday afternoons yeah. coming back. This is to allow people, like Jay said, to you know, get back to their car on Friday afternoons if they take the train in the morning, it's which just, is what we would like to It's just a lot of money, do. so I just wanted to make sure it's worth the, the people oh, are actually it's using it. It's not a lot. I don't know, it's a few thousand dollars more. Three hundred and thirty-three thousand. Course of the summer. Right, and it's state funded. Um, it's, no, it's it's yeah, not. That's the total. That's budget. not the, the cost the of total. adding Friday. The cost yeah. of adding Friday was like an extra five thousand or seven thousand. Yeah, that's the total everything. Um, Oh, which yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why. Why is the three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars total in there? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Let's try to check that. But uh, okay. Well, that's the contract, the intermodal contract, not to exceed a number for yeah. everything. That's the yeah, overall. That's the yeah. total right. total. Okay, because that makes it seem like it's East for Hampton this. and yeah. South Hampton, right? You know, Fred got all the, of the loops. Fred got this. the funding up to seven hundred fifty thousand, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. He got an extra two hundred fifty thousand, and. Uh, and we had half a million, but we share it with East Hampton. They're actually running more service than we are. Yeah, they expanded their service in East Hampton. Um, and for good reason. There's more people going there and going to different places. Because yeah, their workers have to... So everyone you know, that I've heard from that works South in Hampton. East Hampton loves it. Mm. Yeah. Well, at least they don't have to drive through South Hampton. Yeah. Okay. Less cars on the road. Yeah. So. A lot of businesses near the train station in East Hampton. The schools are within walking distance, and a lot of people from East Hampton Town take the train as well. Mm. No, it's great. It's a it's a great thing. It's getting more and more used. I mean, last time I looked at the numbers, they were up significantly. So, and the traffic is so bad, as you all know. All right. So, John, you have the next one. Town Board Resolution ID three four uh, four three four two one authorizes the supplemental funding for WQIP of Alewife Creek Stormwater and Restoration Project. Town Board Resolution 43368, award and authorize the supervisor to sign a contract for 2023 Silverado 1500 crew RST four wheel. What does RST stand for? No idea. Okay. With Buzz Chew Chevrolet, Cadillac Incorporated. Probably has like an off road package. Town Board Resolution ID 43273. Authorize an award to supervisors to sign a contract for invasive vegetative control and removal with coastal commercial property management. Town Board Resolution ID 43312, award and authorize the supervisor to sign a contract for 2-2-2022 Ford F-350 SRW, again, I don't know what that means, 4x4 Super Cab with Otis Ford Incorporated. Just the trim package. Town Board Resolution ID 43274, award and authorize the supervisor to sign a contract for 2022 Ford F-250 Super Duty with open utility body with Otis Ford Incorporated. Town Board Resolution ID 43305, award and authorize the supervisor to sign a, a contract with Easton Architect LLP for architectural and engineering services for Tupper Boathouse. Town Board Resolution ID 43418, the 2023 notice to bidders for Elwife Creek Habitat Enhancement Project. 43397, 2023 notice to bidders for Round Pond Stormwater Improvements. Um, 43389, 2022 fund balance allocation for capital borrowing as it relates 
the debt reduction policy. Uh, so just remember that uh, we have a policy in place where if we see unanticipated reserves that come in higher than the amount we anticipated in, uh, in the budget, then 75% of that goes toward offsetting borrowing, anticipated borrowing. And that's, that's what this is doing. It's uh, uh, programming some of that money um, you know, and you know, different accounts have different uh, reserves. Pretty much everything with the exception, I think, of one fund, waste management. Waste management. Everything waste. came out with a, res a balance above what we had predicted. Um, you, know, it's, you know, overall, it was a significant delta, like 4 million, 4.7 million, um, more than we had anticipated. So uh, of that, 3.4 million will be taken to um, reduce what we were going to borrow this year. And uh, that's reflected. So if you guys have any questions about how that is being spent, uh, yeah, we can always bring Dorothy in too, but she's been advising me on that. Um, 43348 accepts payment from Recla Equity Development LLC for capital project sub subaqueous crossing crossing <coughs> debt reduction. So that is uh, Part of that canoe place development, right? That they were going to initially put a, a valve in. That was an automated valve. If the pressure dropped, uh, it had to do with fire suppression. Um, but when we decided to do the second under, you know, the under the canal water main, this was this basically was the cost that the valve was going to cost. This being applied, in, so the. Uh, CPI or Recla Equity is uh, providing the money uh, to offset that project instead. 43412 amends the 2023 adopted budget for purchase of Bay Constable vehicles. Uh, Jim, just a question, not on this, but part of the change in the PDD for Canoe Place Inn was that um, the taxes property taxes on the boathouse, the differential between what they actually pay in property taxes, which was, uh, you know, based on the hotel use, because we allowed it to be a hotel on that side versus, uh, <coughs> versus I guess, the residential mm -hmm. units, condominiums. Right. Uh, they had agreed to provide, I guess, the school and the firehouses with that if there was a difference in the assessment, somebody has right. to calculate it. I don't know that. Yeah, I'll that check with I'll check with happening. Lisa about that. I'm not quite sure that there would, would be a difference, quite frankly. But I'll I'll check with Lisa. Lisa's supposed to calculate it. Yeah, and then there was, calculate it was, the. It was less as a it was less as a hotel use. I think it's like a hundred thousand dollar difference. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll I'll check with her. Right. <clears throat> um, if you yeah, if you could check on that. Yeah, there's also tax revenue sharing, correct? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, the hotel tax. The hotel tax mm -hmm. yeah. that goes to the county. Yeah. Do we see any yeah. of that? The hotel tax. We don't see any of it. I we mean, should. Our legislator, uh, legislator Fleming. I mean, there there are some some of that money goes into a fund that gets spent on the East End on uh, well, that's, arts, yeah. cultural arts, right. and things like that. Not specifically to Southampton, but but lots of organizations in Southampton benefit from that. Um, so well, all I'm suggesting is that we know the portion of that. Yeah. But most of the money for hotel tax doesn't come back to our area. And the only real earmarks in that are for Discover Long Island and uh, Vanderbilt Museum and Walt Whitman Museum. But uh, so everything else we sort of have to fight for. Yeah. Uh, 43348. Accepts payment from regular equity. Did I do this? Yep. 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 We're on page 50. Uh, did I do 43412? Yeah. Did I do Yes. Yes. For the uh, bank constable? Uh -huh. Yep. Constable vehicles. Okay, 43384 is Flanders North Anthem Volunteer Ambulance Corps Service Award Program. Is anybody co sponsoring them? I'll co sponsor it. Glad that we have it. 
Yeah. Town Board Resolution 43390 reappoint Stephanie Davis to Landmarks and Historic Districts Board. Town Board Resolution 43391 appoint Stephanie Davis Vice Chair of the Landmarks and Historic Districts Board for 2023. Town Board Resolution 43392 appoint Edward Wesnowski Chair of the Landmarks and Historic Districts Board for 2023. 38630 resolution to authorize oh, okay resolution to authorize eminent domain proceedings for the acquisition of property necessary for the improvement of a portion of Shinnecock Hills Road and Arbutus Road Shinnecock Hills now Jim this one is this is sort of like a friendly condemnation yeah to clear I, title right it's just right when we did the title report and really the only entity that may claim any type of title or title of interest is this old um, corporation, the Shinnecock Hills Corporation. But in order to for us to acquire complete clear title uh, before we invest the money to invest in this road, um, the title company suggests that we do our eminent domain uh, proceeding. So that's what we're doing. So this just authorizes us to to do the proceeding. We so this is just a quiet title, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have the surveys done, and we're, you know, we'll be having the public hearing. Yeah, otherwise we couldn't spend out. public money on building a, a road there on somebody else's right, property. Right, right, We didn't want to risk that. We want to, yeah, of course. We want to get clear title, make sure we have clear title before we spend any money on it. So. But this is really important, I, I believe, really important project. Yeah, so I think it is, too. It, you know, it's just like 130 homes back there that really need a, a safer passage yep. that this will provide um, and it does it does provide a, another emergency route in, you know in, in, uh, mm -hmm. if necessary if 39 is shut down I mean so. there's it's when there's an accident on 39 these people literally cannot get home to their children right I know right, <laughs> right so this this could provide a, a way to route traffic right we've been so, you know wrestling with this for this a while. is a one-way street going mm -hmm. out but in an emergency it becomes it goes the other direction Absolutely. All right. Uh, four, three, 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 seven. Um, resolution adoption amending count code three thirty dash seventy seven to increase the permitted required rear yard lot coverage percentage. And we've dis we've discussed this to mm -hmm. go from twenty percent to I think fifty percent. Yep. Town Board Resolution ID four three three seven zero resolution of adoption amending town code chapter three sixteen. Vehicles junked and abandoned in order to enhance enforcement ability. And this is the one where sort We're of boats, boats, and, boats trailers. and things like that. Uh, well, it looks like we're at 43414. Accepts workforce housing payment for Canoe Place Inn, <coughs> Canal, Eastern Maritime Plan, Development District, Hampton Bays. That one or not? What is that, Jim? Hmm. There. I think, believe, I guess the payment in lieu of providing housing. So I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't build a required half a million dollars. affordable units. The, to satisfy the, the Long Island workforce housing. Uh, right, yeah. which only applied when it was going to be residential. And then we converted it to, but I guess it still predates that. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to when it was residential. Yeah, I believe so. That's yeah. yeah. It has when to do with the, the yield of the 37 right. townhouses. Initially, they were looking to do the um, have those as sales as right for 37 townhouses. As. I mean, it's a, it's a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, now that will go into. So, it says Long Island so. Workforce Restricted Account. I don't know why it's called that. It's, it should be the Community Housing Fund. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe that's so what I think that's thing. what it's yeah. and we should check on that. Or that may be the county. Sure. Name I'm assuming that's what it is. But yeah. Checks are already in the vault, so <laughs> once I mean, I'll take, this, I'll, someone's coming for it. Yeah, I'll 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 take the money. I know they I, I don't believe they were trying to get around having to pay this by converting right. to commercial. Um, so right. I mean this, I think this, the units, this the was a requirement of the initial and it right. well, they built 37 units, so I think it applies. You know, it doesn't apply. It would have if applied you're if they sold, sold or rental. It's a 
as a as a hotel, yeah, then maybe not. But no, I think it's because of the original approval. The original approval was residential on that side. Yeah. And they would have had to do. But they also agreed to change it to in order to change to hotel, they would pay whatever they needed to to make it. Yes. Right. The same as it would for the. Yeah, and it describes it in the reso. Right. Yes. Oh. All right, John, you're next. Town Board Resolution ID 43364, authorization, authorization of cost reimbursement waiver for the East Quad Fire Department Memorial Day Parade on May 28, 2023, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Could I be added as this Sunday? Certainly. Four three three nine three authorize the supervisor to sign documents for the transfer of sanitary flow credits as it relates to the site plan special exemption for three three ten Noyak Road Noyak. Um, so that is for the affordable units, right? Yeah. So we're citing flow credits on a property that's got special exemption well this is is this one being done by the housing authority I believe it is I think it is because there's a request for 942 gallons a day sanitary flow credits so then it's the project applicant so they're building two townhouse buildings with four apartments each and I think they're all affordable um, no no this is the corner of Berkshire and Noyak. This is 3310 Noyak Road. The project consists of the construction of eight apartments, each not exceeding 600 square feet, to be located in two new townhouse buildings, four apartments per building, regulated by the Sound of Southampton for affordable housing pursuant to 216. Um, All eight apartments will be regulated by the town of Southampton for affordable housing pursuant to Chapter 216, housing for eligible households. I know there was there I'm was a little confused with there this. was a development that the housing authority was yeah. doing. You're saying, Tommy John, you think this is something that's a private development that's affordable? Yes, it is. Well, I, and I don't know if it's entirely affordable. Um, well, these, a portion these of it is, a, I, I, I believe, I need to read this, you know, to, yeah, this is I'm sorry, this. you know, like, uh, this is, this is uh, between Trout Pond and the Hamlet Center on a private home located on the north, northern side. That's going to be redesigned. We'll get clarification. For so, yeah, Sarah. my question is, you know, the, the, the develop the the flow credits and how many and and how many are um, are affordable? How many units are affordable in the in, in the entire uh, development here? Well, yeah, and I, we can only give these credits away for well, affordable all, housing. Yeah. All eight apartments will be regulated for affordable housing. So there are eight apartments total. That's what it says. So I say I have to like, comb through it a bit. Well, that yeah, that's what I was reading in the second whereas, but then I'm also seeing additional tax credits or flow credits for. I, I'd have to talk to Kara. I still think this may be a different project. One by the housing authority, but I can't, <coughs> I can't look tell just by the yeah. Uh, we have the to ask. Okay. All right, we just need more information yeah. on that. Let's mm -hmm. move on. It, this is this is not the housing authority. It's, it's on the north side of Noyak Road between Trout Pond and and uh, Hamlet Center on the corner of Berkshire and, and Noyak Road. Just so we know, mm -hmm. it's a private residence. So. And I'm really happy that affordable units are going to be going in here. So we keep it on. Who's the developer? Do you know? Um, 
I do. I, I, I think it's Judge Burke. No, it's, it's 3310 that matters, Noyak Road, LLC. Is mm -hmm. the, okay, the company. Okay, well, we need affordable, so. Um, all right, 43369, authorize the waiver of fees for the Southampton Fire District. Oh, what is this for? Um, building a substation or a new firehouse or substation. They're seeking to construct a new firehouse? Mm-hmm. Water mill. Uh, I need to look at this more carefully here. So this yeah. is the Southampton Fire District, which right now contracts with the village, I believe, to provide fire services. Uh, they're seeking to construct a new firehouse at th in water mill. At 310, okay, I know that property that they bought, there's a home there. The town authorized waiver, okay. Um, so we're waiving the, the what the? The land the management and municipal of works. Of $18,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be nice if we could get updated as to what yeah. the fire district is doing, but yeah. they, they, is that gonna be their main firehouse? No, I don't believe so. I think they I just think it's need a sub coverage in the western end. I think it's a sub district, station. yeah, or at the eastern end of the district. Uh, but they also own a property on uh, North, sea, North Road. sea Road. Where, uh, but what? this right now everything runs out of the village, and you know they're so, covering a lot of stuff. Right, the right now the village, the and uh, I'm sure the village is going to continue to provide fire service. It's going to be years before they have equipment, firehouses, and everything else where they could do it themselves. And volunteers, which we know is getting harder and harder. I just would like them to update us. We can surely ask them to come in, provide yeah. us with an update. We could. Do we know who the head of the, the, head of the fire commissioners are? I, I believe they all have equal jurisdiction. But yeah, we could probably get some of the folks in to give we'll us an a update. Get one of the Southampton Fire Commissioners to come in. Yeah, Tommy John, do you want to work on that? Okay. All right, uh, 43363, release of performance bond in connection with the planned residential development cluster plan of Mill Creek Heights, also known as Sag Harbor Woods in Noyak. 42576. 2023 junkyard permits. And 42812 is 2023 part time salaries. 43083 accepts resignation of uh, senior office um, assistant in municipal works. Senior assistant. Sorry. Is it? Senior office assistant. Yes. I thought she was staying. I think she's transferred. She's transferred? Yes. Uh, uh, four, uh, 43314 accepts resignation of the senior office assistant in the police department. 43321 accepts resignation of a heavy equipment operator in the highway department. 43290 appoints Maria Cabrera to custodial worker one position in municipal works. 43332. Uh, have we mm -hmm. discussed salary? We have. We discussing salary. Okay. All right. Uh, this, this resolution appoints Tracy Colson to use services coordinator position in the Bureau. Uh, 43351 authorizes attendance at the Police Executive Research Forum annual meeting in New York City from July 17th through 19th, 23, 43416, authorized drug uh, court judge and personnel to attend the National Association of Drug Court Professionals Conference. 43419 is a notice of public hearing to consider the acquisition of development rights at 771 and uh, 791 Zagaponic. Is that a post office box? What is that? Part of. A oh, part of. Oh, part of. Thank you. 791 
Sagaponic Main Street and part of 135 Gibson Lane, uh, 26 and part of 60 Daniels Lane, Village of Sagaponic and amends CPF management and stewardship plan to include the properties. Town Board Resolution ID 43187, Notice of Public Hearing to consider the inclusion of 140 West Montauk Highway into the Hampton Bays Park District. Just, just hold on one second. So that public hearing in Sagaponic, that is that horse farm at the top property. of the property. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's not necessary. Is it, t yeah, Toppin, yeah. Toppin Farm. And we had discussed this a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was quite a bit because it was. Um, so many properties involved? Yeah, a number of different family members and involved. So it was a very complicated contract this process. But this is a $10 million acquisition. Yeah. Um, no, I, I remember we uh, we had an agreement. I just, we, I, we haven't done it yet. We haven't held the hearing. So this hearing is June 13th. It was, it was it was a while to get everybody in contract. Yeah, because there's different family members. It was yeah, and I was after Lisa left, I was <laughs> into it. It was quite complicated, and then Dan has picked it up since then. And, but no, it's a it's, it's beautiful property. Um, all right, so I, I Rick, did you read for yeah, yes, we did that one. Um, so the John's town board page. resolution ID 43424, hearing to amend town code chapter 312-62 to implement a parking by permit only pilot program at Wildwood Lake Park for weekends and federal holidays, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Independence Day, Labor Day from May 15th to September 15th for a one year period. I'd like to be a co-sponsor on that, please. Sure. Can I just rewind to the other one that you had, Rick, the 43187? The public hearing, 140 West Montauk Highway. That that sounds like that new building we bought. The uh, it's the old chamber building. We tore down the chamber building, oh, improving yeah, yeah. the property. Yeah. They have the base beautification. Yeah, the doing some improvements on it as far and as flower beds and. They need parks. The yeah. park district to maintain. Which, it. which one do you want to be a co-sponsor? Four three four, four two four. Do we want to put it in the parks district? So that do? they can pay to maintain the stuff that the beautification puts in. It, well, we can do that now through the toll town. This will put it in the Hampton Bays only payment. Um, we need to look at the western end of Good Ground Park and the possible entrance and exit. And well, it's just that and we're also trying to work on a redevelopment plan for downtown Hampton Bays and, you know, that property, you know, may end up being municipal parking or something like that. The old chamber building. So I just don't know if that complicates our efforts. Because we'd have to do park alienation if we wanted to use it in that way. Well, it's for a public hearing, so it's we already can in have park. a discussion. And purchased the property on their open space, I believe. It, it was an open space bond. It wasn't a CPL. Yeah, this is just for a public hearing. We can mm. have this discussion. I, I understand. No, I know. Oh, and I'm saying. <laughs> I get it. I just, I'm just not sure it's, it's the, the right thing to do. I, I know that the Beautification Association is. I, they had a donation from somebody to do plantings on that property. And we weren't going to the taxpayers. I didn't believe. No, it wasn't. It's to maintain it, because parks, because the the Hampton Bay's Park District will contract out to have a landscaping company that does all of the entrance ways and all of that stuff, maintain it so that the parks department doesn't have to. Does it interfere with the municipal planning of downtown Hampton Bay, is it, for me, is, is the question, you know, because there's a lot of things up in the air. I like the idea, conceptually, and I'm not, you know, debating it. I mean, know, I think even if it's in the parks, that's that's then it's a municipal thinking. lot, they can still beautify the parking lot. Mm. I, I don't know if it's going to be yeah, a lot. I don't think I, the proposed road like, from the most recent plan through went through that property. Right. No, but I, the, and that's the stuff I need to. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to go through that. If we need to get to Cemetery Road, we'll have to. So why don't we pull it out for a year and wait? How do you get to Cemetery Road from that property? You don't. You have to, go you have to also road. get a piece of the Methodist the right. church right. there too. Then you could get to Cemetery Road. But Cemetery Road's a private road. And I don't know if we can use Cemetery Road. But you still could have a municipal parking lot that 
is tied into the development plans, the downtown development so plans. I just it just makes complicated. So efforts. why don't we hold off on this until we decide what we're doing? Yeah, I think we should at least talk to Janice about it. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Frank was working very closely with. Um, Susan mm -hmm. well, I, yeah, but I, the funding so it this way, what is it, $3,000? We, well, we don't have to complicate our efforts. But anyway, it's a public hearing. We can, don't have to pass it. It's just well, to make it look nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, John, why do you read the next one? Um, oh, you, we already I, did I, the next we one. We did that one already, yeah. And I'll just put the board, this is an agreement that we've always had with Wildwood for a number of years now, so this is just some amendments to that, particularly for parking on holidays and certain weekends. But this is, that's a church that owns Yeah, it. we're making some changes this year in preparation of the church, mm -hmm. doing some repairs, and then we have to figure out a, a new agreement or a new way to police this down the road. Um, so the church has said they would manage the parking there? No. No, no. No. I'm confused. No, it's still. No, we're trying to preserve parking for Wildwood Park. The, the, the same agreement is still in place. Yes. It's, this is just an amendment as this is Section a, E. A which permit. Yeah, yeah, it's essentially it's, a, a, a temporary for this year. The church is not going to be using in any way this. The property this year they're going to be they're starting the reconstruction of their actually replacing the first thing they're doing is replacing the roof on the building uh, they'll not they won't be using the parking area at all for this year so uh, what we used to have before the bowling alley the guy who was operating the bowling alley kind of monitored the park parking there uh, so we, we won't have anybody there this year so I think the best way to, to do this for this year is to have town town permit parking for the area that'll keep control of the parking yeah uh, and we'll have our PD and TCO go through there to make sure that this Which ironically was what we originally wanted to do, but to yeah, work with Yeah, we just have, we have this issue that when this property was purchased, we have these cross easements for the parking, so that's something that happened, happened so years ago. So now is that a change in the past? You didn't have to have a town parking permit to park there. They charged some, uh, you, you were charged if you didn't, right? If right. you didn't yes. have it, you got charged, right? But that was when there was, so that's when they was, had personnel there. Was there alley operator now we present. don't have that. So this year, there's not going to be anybody present, so we have to take it over full control over the regulation of the parking of the property. So we thought this year, we do the parking bike permit, and then for this year, the church will not be using the property at all this year other than to you know, maybe park for having maintenance workers. So that is a change. So somebody who's been paying to use it who doesn't have a parking permit won't be able to park there this year. That's right. correct. Yeah. Um, we should have plenty of people out there in the first couple of weekends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no, we know that. Yeah, we yeah. we we work. We've met with PD on this. Today. They're aware, and we understand. Yeah. It's yeah. a popular spot. It is. It I is a popular spot. It we'll also generates a fair amount of complaints. For I wonder if we reasons. shouldn't create a parking permit for Wildwood or you know, people to pay uh, necessarily not necessarily let you go to all the town beaches but well the problem is that you don't have personnel there to check anything well so the only to, thing that's I think you have a lot of out of town users feasibly of noted yeah and that that's what happens well, but you're making a town we're making a town parking permit only somebody's got to check that so well that's what PD you could does have, what I'm suggesting is you could have like for a hundred bucks or fifty bucks a Special sticker for Wildwood. It's all you know. There might there may be people from the Riverhead area that use this have hit, always used this park, you know, and they paid by the day. That will not be able to use it now. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's weekends and, and holidays. We're not. It's not it's not going to be enforced on a weekdays. So. It's just weekends and holidays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just afraid that now they're going to park on the street or. And, well, right. That's and the we concern. Did, you know, we have to talk to some of the community members around there, and we, we are concerned about that could be the, the unintended impact of this, is that there might be more overflow parking on the streets. But PD was there. and but that, That's why that the idea of having a, I mean, somebody has to administer it, but you'd have to, whatever, pay your 50 bucks and you get a, a decal to park at that lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is a public hearing, it. so we'll yeah. work with Yeah. Yeah. We'll go through that. Yeah, it's... Um, 
It's oh, an issue, but it's, it, w it well, it was an issue originally. That's why we started right. this. We were right. fortunate. It's really, and you know, and it's a difficult site. It, and our park director has concerns about the site in general. Yeah, it just, it just happens to be near a bordering town, and yeah, you know, it's I, I, well, we had Wildwood Bowling Alley, which was they they were really good in hel helping us with this issue. It hasn't mm -hmm. been an issue, but right. now it's but, going to become one for obvious. But reasons. those you know, residents of Flanders Riverside use a lot of Riverhead parks. And I, I just want to make sure that we're not creating a situation where they'll start getting shut out of Riverhead facilities. Um, but anyway, we can we can talk about it. Four three four zero eight authorized CPF acceptance of the transfer and donation of the Ellis Squire House property, Hampton Bay's terminate stewardship agreement with the Conic Historic Preservation Inc. and amend CPF project plan and CPF stewardship and management plan to include the property. Actually, we had held a hearing on this a very mm -hmm. long time ago. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Lisa Comrie. Was it? Uh, what, yeah. what year was it? Could I be added as a co-sponsor? Yeah. Where, was, where was the hearing held? Was it, uh, March. was it in March of 22? Well, we, we designated the Squire's House as a historic. Yeah, March. March 22. 22 yeah. Public hearing in so. 2007, and then we oh, yeah. had a resolution in 2017. The history's here on the. Yeah, I, I actually went back and watched the hearing to refresh my memory. But yeah, this this is a really important property, and we had given it to a not for profit, you know, and they were trying to get money. We hadn't actually; they were just managing it for us. And they tried to get money for the Gardner Foundation to fix it up. And the Gardner Foundation really won't give it unless the not-for-profit owns it. And, um, and then we realized that like CPF fund could fix it up. So the hearing we held was basically to cancel the agreement with the uh, not-for-profit and, and then give the property to CPF, which also owns the property next door, and then have CPF restore this house. It's the oldest house in Hampton Bays. And it's, I think it's on the National Registry. So it's, a, uh, it's an important uh, piece of property that really uh, deserves to be better cared for. And this will give it that ability. Um, but if anybody, you know, I welcome you guys to go back and get on the town's website and review that public hearing. If you, you may not have been here, I don't remember. But, um, Nobody spoke against it. Uh, Lisa Tombry did a really nice job presenting. Yeah, we had pictures that day, and you know I've walked the place too. It's it needs to be preserved. Um, okay, so in are there more? This just one. you have one Adam. So four three four two nine authorizes supervisor to execute any and all documents pertaining to the port security grant for use in the Bay Constables Division. For a new boat. <clears throat> to offset the cost of a new boat. That's an expensive boat. So it's a... Uh, the well, to, I believe to get that Homeland Securities grant, they have to it's, meet certain yeah, requirements a, on the lot. boat, which make yeah, the well, we have to cost. come up with 187000 but they the grant request is for 561 uh, And what type of boat is this? Uh, Patrol boat, I believe. All right. Um, all right. A anything else on the agenda? Everybody okay with it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, Sunday, you're <laughs> free to, to go. Punch. Thank Bye. you. Run, you run go. like the wind. Are you, are you ready to go? Yes. No. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, no, we're ready. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, so we're a little behind schedule. So um, next we're going to talk about wireless communication structures. And we are joined by a number of people. Um, hey. We have uh, Len Marchese, a wow. former, wow. Contro yeah. former controller, yeah. controller yeah. who's been consulting yeah. on a number of Tom. projects, including this. Tom. Uh, Tom? 
Tom. Yeah, you we, have, well, we have the Bendigo, too. Oh, you do? <laughs> well, we got another. Uh, we also have Janice Shearer, our Town Planning and Development Administrator. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Tom says he's good over there. <laughs> he has nothing to add. Um, we also have Tom. <laughs> Tom, Tom his, <laughs> his opinion is important. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Tom Houghton is here. He's yes. our uh, town engineer. <laughs> um, we also we also have former town board member <laughs> Julie Lofstad mm -hmm. in the audience, <laughs> who also uh, is here representing There's commercial fishing vendors. interests. Sorry. Oh. And then we have. Uh, Are they not here yet? Keto. <laughs> Okay. So we have Keith Keitho who will be here in a second with uh, PowerPoint. Yes. Hope this works last minute. Hi. <laughs> you are? Uh, Laurel Mooney. Laure Laurel? Yep. L A U R E L. Yes. All right, Laurel Mooney. M O O N E Y. Yep. And you're with. Hello, everyone. Uh, Tower Point. Okay. With Keith. Tom, do you have an easel there? An easel. And you must be Keith. Oh yeah. Which Charles is like, do you want anything else? Hey, Mike left. Okay, he's. Keith, you and I have spoken a number of times. Some bagels. Some bagels. There's only one. First time in person. Uh, I'll make it work man. We need can, can we afford a better easel? I'm not asking you. Probably should have been These are all, all other just yeah. simulations. Thank you. Simulations for the town are in the uh, presentation and, and no, 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 about four months ago, five months ago, we uh, developed the concept to put out an RFP uh, for some cell tower uh, providers to give us some proposals at various town sites. There's been a need in several areas of the town for additional service. So we, uh, we issued a uh, RFP. We got back uh, four or five different proposals from different vendors. And uh, we had a committee internally that met and uh, reviewed all the proposals, and we narrowed it down to uh, Tower Point as the best option for the town. They, their proposals seemed the most fiscally advantageous, and um, uh, the, the design seemed to be what we were looking for. Uh, and so um, we asked them to come in. They, they further fine-tuned their proposal. And uh, we talked about what we were looking for. Janice laid out some of the, the parameters uh, regarding like the planning board and what, what our requirements are and stuff like that. And, uh, and then they came back with a final kind of site plan. Uh, you want to add anything to that? No, and that is really the idea is to have, um, and always in the wireless master plan, it was um, advocated that the board look at um, revenue options, look at utilizing um, town property where it makes sense, where we need the signal um, to allow for emergency communications, um, and produce revenue which offsets the taxpayer burdens of for services and different things that we need um, done here in the town. So with that, now, uh, Keith can explain. Can I ask a couple of questions? Or bring Absolutely. Cell towers are not necessarily the purview of the town or any municipality. Private individuals can have them erected on their property if they meet the special exemption standards. Right. Yes, that's absolutely correct. So most mm -hmm. times what happens is, you know, um, a carrier or a company will seek to put in an application <coughs> to the planning board on private property for 
um, or you know, wireless communication tower mm -hmm. or some type of infrastructure. Um, in the wireless master plan, we talk about how that should be done and where. And there's avoidance areas, there's opportunity areas. We lay out like the high points in the town and talk about like if you had a tall building, you could put antennas on there. And, and then there's, you know, um, the public side of this is you have even more control when you're the landlord. And that's the truth. Like if you are controlling the actual parcel, then you, you have regulatory control on a planning board, but there's only so far you can go because there's all these FCC that's rules. That's the benefit if the and town were to build them. Yeah, so right. the benefit of the town doing it is mm -hmm. A, you get revenue, and B, you have even more control because you are laying out what you want in a lease structure. And we are in the business of ready. We have a bunch of uh, cell tower mm -hmm. agreements currently uh, in various places throughout the town. Okay, we had one go up in, in Watermill on a private property in the past. Yes, past not, year. Not, not and, and they went to the planning board it, through our code and, this and got County Road 39 right. on top of Corbell. Right. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't want the public to think that this is just a thing that the, the that cell phone towers are a thing that the town does or the mm -hmm. municipality does. It can be done by private as well as uh, public entities. Yes, um, well, but your the wireless policies that have been adopted by previous boards that unless you change them, mm -hmm. those are the policies, and the policies say you know, work with people when they come in to try to do, um, you know, installations on public property. But instead of even doing that, because we got inundated with people who were like, how about here, how about there? We put out a bid and said, these are the two locations that you might consider, right. which is the commercial dock and the um, transfer station. And those, instead of everybody, you know, in most places are not, um, it doesn't make sense, but these two places particularly do. So um, now we'll see what they've come with. One last question. private individuals that have cell towers on private property, they make revenue off of that cell tower. Right. You mm -hmm. guys should probably address that. Yep. Just laying that out for yeah, the Yeah, and here this the is, revenue I goes back this, to the town, so the right. town is able to, you know, use that um, to offset okay. uh, other yeah, even in this, in this area, the, the town of Southampton, I think, has the most land, right? And if you look at all the other resident, there's a lot of residential property. So even though there's private property, the residential properties are not going to be really suitable for a cell tower, nor will they want it. They, you know, so we look at the town property as probably the best property to do the build out here within the town of Southampton. Okay. You know, and you brought up a very good point. We're dealing with another town where if you have private property next to government land, they actually almost force you to build on government. And this is on Long Island, so we're fighting with that. And yeah. we have a meeting next week about that. They force you what to use the residential as commercial? Uh, no, they actually want you off the private on property the onto the public land, which we we disagree with because you're like a public entity taken away from private enterprise, right? So so you come in on the you come in with we the came in on the private, the private and they're like, no, nah, we kind of want it over there. We're like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> well, they, this, <laughs> this was their plan. They're, they're, they're taking revenue the from yeah. they're yeah. taking exactly. and you know and. The, this is a, yeah, they could suggest it, and this is a large property. I mean, to be like, this is insane they're doing this, you know? So. We've been doing stuff with um, municipal um, entities and quasi governments since the 90s. Our first cell tower was with the town of Babylon in 1999 or something like that. And we've done all their beaches, Oak, uh, Overlook, Gilgo, uh, Venetian Shores. Um, Town Hall. Uh, there's a whole list of different municipalities that we've we've, um, we've worked with. And back then, it wasn't flagpoles either. So one was. One was. Yeah. So. But. So we kind of. So why don't you go through um, the proposal? Your proposal and talk about what you're offering and. Now we put out a bid and we and that's why. Okay, right. so, so we're all clear. Let's Let's screw it up there. Um, how do I manage that? How do I? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you just say you change next slide next or try to do it. Uh, next slide. Big slide. Go So this is just a quick overview of us. We're full turnkey. Um, everything's done inside financing, development, construction, and management. Uh, next slide. Uh, bringing all the partners together. Uh, 150 plus years of knowledge. 600 plus deployments. 700 sites under management, so that's very good for 
uh, talking with the carriers. You know, if there's a one one off, you know, cell tower owner, the carriers don't really care. You know, when you have mm -hmm. a large portfolio, you can really leverage the higher rent and also carriers want uh, how should I, like a firm that knows what they're doing. You know, because it's you we're know, local, so local, and et cetera. And we've done 125 plus ground up developments. That's uh, macro sites, so full cell phone towers. Not we're not talking rooftops. We're talking actual cell phone towers. Uh, next slide. So this is the first uh, one we're doing is a transfer station. So uh, the detail is on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we proposed two heights here. Uh, after talking with the carriers, we actually wanted to go to 140 uh, off the bat, uh, and that is because uh, of high interest. Uh, and we'll actually, it, so what we want to do is actually show the combined revenue. So if we just started with 120, combined revenue is around 4.4. Uh, if we go with the 140, we can get more, more, more carriers on, and it can double up. It actually brings in around almost $2 million more. That's over how long? Uh, that's a 10-year period. Uh, yeah. uh, that's actually including also the 25X that we did as a buyout value. So what that means is you guys have a revenue stream, so you can actually sell that revenue stream to us, and we'll buy it out, right? Uh, but then you get no more revenue. So if you want a cash, a large cash influx, you could sell it to us. Right. Uh, even in our agreements, we'll have a, a rofer, right of first refusal. And that's just because we want to protect our assets. If we're going to be investing in the tower, we want to make sure no one can come in and literally buy the ground underneath and steal our asset if our lease runs. But we don't know that we would actually, like, parcelize it and give it away either. Oh, yeah, of course no. not. Uh, yeah, no, you it's don't have to. It's just, it's just another if we, option if, if we you, needed the it. town needs to Oh, okay. So because it's most likely we like keep a, a, the public property public window, and that's, that's that. that. Is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah they, they, they were like tobacco collateralized yeah. tobacco yeah. settlement. Yeah. Tobacco settlement. The future yeah. revenue stream so far. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a backdoor <laughs> county <laughs> mechanism. Yeah, it becomes a one shot. Put 50 mil, you know, I'll take it. No, it is in our plan, and my recommendation would be to you use the stream, the, 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 the long-term income stream to help support the commercial, not this one, but the, the one that we're talking about in uh, the commercial fishing area, to use that revenue stream to support maintaining that and improving that facility. Well, but here, could we use some of the revenue in waste management? Because that transfer station is one of the few that is not, you know, it's run, it's an enterprise fund, but it's not meeting it's yeah. not meeting it, Absolutely. the definition I of an Tom enterprise. Would be happy well, to hear that. it's running <laughs> on a deficit. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, the general fund sub subsidizes that operation. So, right. yeah, you could, the town, obviously, the board will can decide on how you want to allocate the revenues. That's that's one of your mm -hmm. options. But um, it's similar in that way to the commercial dock. Yeah. yeah. We want uh, to self sustain. So. Off of that, I will say uh, we did talk with Andrew Hintz, who does the town communications. For the North Sea Transfer Station, it's not 100% needed the extra height for public communications. That's as of currently, but you never know in the future. Um, so for this one, this is really for cell carriers. All right, so we're not putting emergency communications but we, we, in. So we'll the 120 the would work, in other words. You don't really necessarily have to go full out 140, um, off, even off though it's bat, more revenue. It's more revenue. Um, I just want to show the difference he asked. This one is actually for really strictly uh, cell carriers for the at, at the moment. Um, are these designed? Can you go? If let's say you built one twenty, could you add another twenty feet to it later? Correct. Yeah. So we can we we can engineer it so where if another carrier wants to jump on, uh, we have it engineered to go up to one forty, and that includes the so foundation. You can build it at one twenty, but if. We built at 120, but later expanded. Yeah, correct. So, Janice, at North Sea, this wouldn't interfere with our solar arrays, our plan no, with No, no, it's all been designed to all work right. together. We did that at uh, Village of Thomaston, Village Hall, and uh, North Babylon Fire Department. We went up um, 20 feet at Thomaston, and then I think another 30 at, at North Babylon. Mm. Is it possible to put emergency communications on the pole? At the top, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll reserve the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's uh, always reserved and it's completely for free. For a police department if they want. Police, fire department, volunteer, ambulance, um, et cetera. Uh, next slide. Okay. So it's, and it's all communications only? 
or does it go into microwave range? Do you do if, any of that? It's really up to what they would need. So it's, it's interesting you brought that up because they do need a relay at uh, the fishing dock. And that's right. the Southampton Fire District. Yeah. So, uh, and that's, that's just a simple simulation of where it would be. Um, it's kind of dark, but you can see there's a hill in the back. That's where I believe the solar array is going. I did on top of the dump, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're kind of, we're at the bottom of it in that. It's like a cleared area surrounded by trees. Yeah, no, I know the spot. It's a pretty good location. It's uh, building-wise, it's that's structure wise It's actually good. It's flat. It's easy. It's, it's close to where we had the fire. The there was a fire? <laughs> there was a fire, yeah. It's a truck. <laughs> One of our trucks. A One truck. of the trucks. <laughs> oh, okay. Went on fire. Uh, you can go. <laughs> Actually, yeah. my husband, the first week he worked at Sub County Water Authority, his truck went on fire. <laughs> 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 like, only you. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Is that like a 120 or a 140? That that, that's about? actually simulated as 140. We okay. did go with 140 for that. Well, that's 140. Okay. So if you did 120, it would be lower, obviously. It will be, yeah. About the, tree, the trees there are about 75 feet tall, believe it or not. Mm. Yeah. They're, they're substantial. Yeah. Oh. Uh, next slide as well. Uh, we go back one, maybe? Oh, go back. That's, that's sort of where it's go, the pole's going. So. Yeah, go back one, please. So, just to get oriented. Um, and this is all facing north. Mm -hmm. well. There's like that trailer kind of right in front of it, right? That's the trailer? Uh -huh. uh, to the south. To the yeah. south, and that's where um, their office is. building, yeah. yeah. And this area is currently cleared? Uh, it's, right. that's what it's, I'm well, if you had a fire, I was wondering why it was like kind of new growth no, trees. It was, no, it was, it was in front was, of the building. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so yeah, the, no. the area, where's the, where's the pole? In the it's Directly in the middle of that compound. Uh, that circle where is where the black it, dot is? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's scrub growth right in there right now. It was okay. cleared recently. Yeah, I, yeah it's not. Any it's reason like, that's clear? Is it just. It was, just uh, it was previously cleared and we maintain it. Oh, okay. Okay. Doing something with it. It's a perfect spot. It, it is, yeah. It's, uh, it happens, yeah. Okay. Next slide. Thank you. Just so I want the 140. <coughs> Next slide. So there's what, three whips at the top? Oh, yes. Is, uh, is actually, that, can you go back one? Is that for the emergency it. communication? Yeah, yeah so we were, uh, it's, it's just reserved. to show it. It's reserved. Um, emergency equipment, uh, they use whip antennas. The carriers are all in t internal with uh, antennas. So uh, it's going to be. So protected. we wouldn't even have those unless the police asked for it. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, DBW or I do whatever. know uh, Suffolk County did build that new tower about a mile south. East yeah. of this location, so they might not need it. I don't think they do. I don't. Okay. Um, if anything, it would be the fire department. But Andrew of IWT said this is not going to be needed at the moment. Um, okay. But it is needed for cell carriers, obviously. Cell, cell, cell carriers, cell yeah. Cell carriers yeah. are desperate right here. Uh, yeah. th they are. <laughs> and it won't so interfere with that other pole that at a mile south. Oh no. No. Just no, the cell service is terrible in that area. So. Okay. Uh, next slide. When you do these, do you do RF studies, or do you? We can do a full propagation map. Even we, we actually did it for, we did it. Yeah, we, did the last we did an yeah. RF map for this. Did you give it to us? I did. I don't know. Did, so is we, it in here? We, I mean, I know. We've done so much stuff already, I, I forget, you know. I know it's needed in that area, but like in terms of, do you guys know from the carriers that they've requested? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to build this and then nobody's going to take it. You know? Oh, yeah. You know? uh, of course, yeah. Um, we have We're not putting you through the headache or us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they don't want yeah. it. We, <laughs> we need the carrier. So, the carrier so there's a need. We will definitely money. have somebody. <laughs> You've done some kind of business needs analysis. Right? Exactly, yes. Okay. And until we tr truly have a full lease, it's, it's kind of like, all right, we'll word of mouth saying, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that. You know? And under the contract, you pay entirely for the cost of putting it up. Everything. Yes. And you know. Do you get that back, or don't you just get your percentage eventually get it? No, well, through a percentage, yeah. percentage, And we also included a capital contribution uh, once we get a CO from the town. That's just cash for the town to use as they wish. So for the North Sea, that's 225000 Right, so th that's just a straight-out payment. And then it's we also get the rent. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, so we don't we don't cut your rent if you know. I know there's some other agreements that might say, hey, we're going to actually we want to cut your rent until we get our capital, you know, our construction costs back. Right. We don't do that. You pay us up front. Yeah. Okay. And you pay for the cost of putting up. Every. Yep. That's correct. Except lawyer fees, whatever you guys have to do on your end, we don't cover that. Mm. Jim Sorry, Street, Jim. he's not expensive. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of power do you consume? Uh, we just need 200 watts. It's, it's nothing crazy. Um, mm. Yeah, everything's got to be sub metered for the carriers. Um, we we bring in the upfront electric, so we'll have you know, six meters, five meters for Yeah, the we, we have some difficulty tapping into the LIPA grid, as you guys Well, we're having all that worked out with the solar right now. Yeah, so that well, that's what I'm thinking, out. but wow. 200, you know, we'd have to see what the allocation is for our yeah, local residents. Is it three phase or just? Believe it or not, we don't need three phase. You don't need three phase. We, we don't. Um, it's very, very low power. Uh, we do put generators, it's carriers request the generator, so I don't know if that's going to be an issue at all. Uh, sometimes say like no propane or they need to be gas. Um, no, those are just emergency. Uh, emergency. Power outage. Yeah, cooling too because because of the the, the well, cases. Mm -hmm. with the solar too, right? The air, uh, yeah. But the normal power is just straight, straight from the. Oh yeah. yes, yeah, mm -hmm. and everything's sub metered, mm -hmm. so we put plenty of meter banks. So if the fire department does want to jump on, it's very easy for them to, you know, jump so, on out later. So Janice, we really need to check that allocation because we're like at at five megawatts right now. We really need to be. I don't know what the allocation is we're going to give for residents in that area to make this project work with the developer. Well, we might well, usually we no, just. No, they're, well, I mean, they're bringing, they're working out all Cause, well, the. Well, because uh, it's saying here it's coming off of a, it's a tap into a utility pole. Yeah, so what we'll What's, do is add another say? trans. Uh, usually we, we have a we don't, we won't know exactly oh, that's where what we're I'm tapping saying. into. Just, we just have need a to meeting with this, PSCG. This project. Our, our solar array project is the first one that Oh, yeah, there's no conflict. Okay. Uh, consumption wise. Consumption wise. Okay. In fact, you're generating renewable energy here. So, um, the no, I, how much is being taken, tapped from Yeah, this. but I mean, you're producing. You're going to be producing. Mm, right. But too. we also have this allocated for. So, there are oh, the utility. You pay the utility bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, right. no well, conflict. Okay. We sub, it's sub meters, so the carriers do. But if we have equipment there, oh, or uh, if we're with a fire department, sometimes we do pay for it. It sets a. Uh, well, we don't have. Like a, <laughs> we have no. All rent is straight up, and we have no expenses that. Correct. Get deducted from it. Yeah, the key word uh, is gross revenue share. You know, some people will, might sneak in net. You know, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, well I said net revenue share, and they. No, we thirty thousand dollars in expenses. We can yeah, and then subtle, the subtle, little subtle differences yeah, make huge so differences. So we maintain it, maintenance, landscapers, all that stuff to make sure it looks nice and painted. Uh, yeah. Okay. Annual. And yes, yeah, and ours is off the, the gross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. So uh, we did two two things here for the fishing dock. Uh, we did want to show the 50 foot. Uh, for the 50 foot, what we originally proposed was a uh, $75,000 capital contribution, uh, decline revenue, uh, 1.8, and that's with the 10 year uh, 10 year revenue plus a buyout of 25x. Um, but then when we talked to Andrew Hint of IWT, uh, they did say the uh, Southampton Fire District would need 100 feet for their communications. Uh, and he's like, it very likely as well the volunteer ambulance would need to be on as well, right? But he confirmed 100 feet for their equipment on the top of the tower. 100 feet, no, because I thought this was going to be 75 feet, so it's going to be 100 so, feet. Well, I guess the RFP said 50 feet, yeah, right? Yeah, RFP Which was 50. is not really worth kind of anything so each person has like a 10 foot section so you go from 50 to 40 feet and then once you go from 40 to 30 no no carrier is going to want that that lower section so that would be a one carrier pole as we, well and then the fire department also said they needed 100 feet so and we can we can always push back and Andrew's saying is 100 feet 100 percent needed he could come back and say actually we can get away with like 85 right something like that but that's going to be <coughs> further down the line of exactly what is needed um, but I will, uh, from 50 feet to 100 all the carriers can jump on 100 feet right so you'll see that's why we even 
doubled the capital contribution from seventy-five thousand to one hundred fifty thousand. And the carriers are asking to go there because, like, I I'm an eight on AT and T, but I have no problem with cell communications in that area. So it varies per carrier. Um, during the summer, it's going to be a capacity issue, especially with Pine Point Beach, uh, the inlet. Oh, I'll um, say, yeah, I haven't checked that out. Yeah. So uh, it, you know, if you I go there, like I was there, I was there in the. Just you know, a month ago, you know, the beautiful day. You have service because there's no one out here, right? Okay. And then when everyone when comes summer and starts, everyone yeah. has an I iPad, an iPhone, a Mac, it it changes. Oh, we yeah. have that problem with internet. Yeah, they're too. trying to watch like YouTube on the beach, so and it's everybody's a doing that. Type in of issue. TikTok and Snapchat. Exactly. You know, <laughs> people are uploading now. The cameras are crazy. You know, like a Snapchat video is like one gigabyte. You think about that, like ten years ago, that was a full movie a gigabyte. Now they're uploading like a one gigabyte video of them on the beach in seconds, right? It's crazy. It's shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just changed so much, you know? Right. And so I just have to wrap my head around the 100 feet. I, I, you know, in my head, I was going to say this one should be 75 feet, mm -hmm. you know, because it's about 75 feet from the dock, from it's the a, it, water. It's 100 feet what they're proposing, where, they put the, where they're going to put the oh, tower. Okay. Yeah, so we do have, and that was a concern you brought up. Um, it is 100 feet from the bulkhead. And it's 100 feet from the bulkhead, but yeah. now 100 feet is taller. I think the, the tower at the end of the road is 75, roughly. There's a tower there. Coast Guard, I think, has a tower there. Oh, you're talking uh, on the other side of the Pontiac Park Bridge? No, that tower? No, no, oh. no, no that's the, really tall. That's like, I was yeah, going to say, that's, that's like 300, I think it's like 400 yeah. feet. At the end like 400. No, I'm talking about out by the... It's a truss inlet. tower. Okay. Is it, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, it trusses. It's got a series of trusses. No, no, I it's think like that's a like a, a radio beacon for the, the you guys. I think yeah, it's, it's like a like radio signal. Jetty? Yeah, on yeah. a jetty. Something. It's, it's like not, a white house. I'll look, uh, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more it's than that. 75 feet? Because this had a flood zone. <laughs> I, I, I thought, thought it was 70, 75 feet, but This is a flood zone, so this so, is going to have to But you have, have, you, to have a, you have a visual of it at 100? Uh, at 100, yes. Okay. I'd like to see that. So. Well, does that, but could I ask a question on that? Does that include consideration of the FEMA flood zone, your, your need to bring this power and control up at a certain level above ground because it's a flood zone? Yeah, so the, t the foundation tower. So it's more than 100 feet. Um, no, because no? we're going to okay. have all the power and fiber raised up. Raised that's, up. That's so what the, I bottom, the foundation can, it's, everything's so going to be just move above. It the right. bottom that of the tower the can get wet. Thanks. One of the major upgrades that we did on the fishing, you can see it right there, is uh, <coughs> uh, on the commercial dock are the uh, the, 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 the electric. Yeah. All the electric meters are in that <coughs> house. That was on ground level. That's been all redone and then raised to FEMA standards as well. Yeah, that's, uh, I measured it at the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. The whole platform is eight feet. It's a nice job, right? Yeah, it's yeah. actually very clean. <laughs> I don't know who did that, but it was yeah, clean right. okay. <laughs> So that's what it's going to look like? It's, it's, I thought wow. we were going to propose something yeah. around like yeah. that. That's all the gear, all, everything, yeah, everything has to be, has to be, at be that level. Yeah. up at a, at a certain level. Yeah. Yeah. You can't disguise it to look like a lighthouse. Uh, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had the base used to have a lighthouse. We, we have place. to do that all along, do we? <laughs> like Taya, the same way. That was a big... It would look great, wouldn't it? <laughs> we got, uh, is it Gurney's or uh, Montauk Club? There's a... A little lighthouse that has AT and T in it. I know. Okay, I, oh, um, uh, I know what one. Yeah. How about a tree? <laughs> a tree. I'm yeah, kidding. A tree, a tree no. on the beach. <laughs> so it's funny. So no, we, right we had a village huh. in uh, the North Shore. You put an osprey nest. It said, you know, he wants the tree. Wants the tree. We're like, we're not doing the tree. Right. Because we heard nightmares about it. <laughs> so then Verizon said, all right, we'll do you the tree, and. Lo and behold, the branch fell on the mayor's car. Oh, perfect. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, so is, it, it, we have a, fall radius. It's a metal radius. branch, too. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's windy. We, we have fall <laughs> radius. I mean, it's, uh, this is going to look like a flagpole. with that as well. Correct. These yes. are the ones that telescope down if there should be something. They, they fall. Right? No, so, yes, they, uh, they, I call it kinking. So when they fail, this is going to be a tower class three. That can withstand, I believe, it's, is it 145 or 155? So I think it's, it's 145, but then the gusts are different with the uh, public safety. And then you can add in the. Yeah, I gotta check my. Yeah, but there's also variables of ice and stuff. So 100, say 135 mile per hour winds in Long Island. Um, we're gonna be there's gonna be a lot more for a lot of people <laughs> to worry about, right? 
Um, but what happens is they kink about at the midpoint, so it just gets the wind load off. So they don't fall. So, so it folds. It fall, uh, yeah, folds, or I call it a, like a kink. Like bends? A, yeah, bends. And that's just to get the wind factor off. So okay. instead of standing straight up, it's just the wind's kind of going up. It. I have poles that are 25 years old, and nothing's kinking or falling down there. Yeah, yeah these <laughs> are very, so. we, they're over-engineered by design. 130? miles is a lot 135 135 is I a think lot it would be 145 and then uh we have yeah. the we've had and winds above that and um, i mean not unheard i know it's a bad bad day on the east end if that's happening oh yeah but that would be the time when we would want cellular communications is it possible to increase that without affecting uh, the I cost can send you incredibly the, the specs that we we yeah. have because it's gusts and and all that i'm thinking the hurricane so. of 38 mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, yes, We've we can increase them. it. That's federal law. That's it's called like a tower class three, and that's when if public services is on there, that's what they need to meet. Um, that, that, doesn't mean we can't go above it. Yes. Yeah, you know. Funny. And yeah. even I was talking to Laurel about this. I was too. like, this is going to be this one's this is a tough site between <clears throat> foundation, uh, where it's located. I was like, the winter winds. This is going to be northeaster comes through. It's like oh, salt. Yeah. It's uh, well. Yeah. I mean. You we're, we even are talking to the power manufacturer being like, this is going to be a little We need this area. to be like a tank, you know. We've so. had issues with the road, but we there's a major project happening next year to rebuild the beach. You know, because we've had a near breach not far from here. Is it even right across from it? Like, I've but seen really you guys like put like sand every, <laughs> every yeah. year. I go out there, I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, yeah. just there's a very one. big yeah, federal know, project to rebuild the beach okay. that should, well, you know, it's a 30 year <laughs> yeah. project. You know, so it shouldn't be uh, vulnerable like it is today once that project happens. Yeah, it's right. The water's right there. You go over that little yeah. thing. Sometimes. But, uh, sometimes we're working, uh, we're currently working with the, uh, just just an FYI, we're working with the Bayman, that's why Julie's here actually, she's representing um, the Bayman's Association, which is, not Bayman, I'm sorry, commercial fishermen, commercial fishermen. <laughs> I said it before, <laughs> I've made a mistake, the, the 20 boats, they've got a, five, a four, 501c3 corporation now, so she's kind of uh, the spearheading the effort so that we got them on board with the design where we're going to put this location, and we're actually working on conceptual designs at this point uh, to uh, reconfigure the site so that it's beneficial both for the commercial fishermen and the residents. There's going to be some public parking. Uh, we we're proposing perhaps a, a, a cross over the dune so that people don't have to walk on the dune. Um, and uh, so there's a there's a kind of an overall comprehensive plan keyed in to the revenue that's going to be generated <coughs> from this project. Uh, to kind of revitalize that whole end because it's really underutilized from the rest of the town residents' perspectives. You know, other than the 20 commercial boats, not many residents can utilize that area. Right. So that's and part provide of Provide a bathroom potentially in the yeah. building that's there. Yeah. And there. Supervisor, you questioned if it's going to look like a, a flagpole. It's just going to be like this cylinder, kind of like that one. And because of the wind, I recommend not putting a flag there because it just whips around yeah, and then it, it, it's it, it's gonna be destroyed. And then you have to replace it every right. week and just you should uh, put some swiveling generators on there. Is it <laughs> 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 you yeah, can yeah. all your yeah. power? They do make weight. those for the towers. Yeah. 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 Something's spinning around at the time. <laughs> no, actually they're directional. They they're they're facing oh, those and they turn the cylindrical ones. Yeah. And, and they, they catch it yeah. helical helical. They work pretty well. Interesting. Um, yeah, so that is a, just quiet. to clarify, that Very is a hundred foot simulation. That's what a hundred foot would look like. I know it's going to be white. and you paint it uh, white? Or so I, uh, I like doing the sky blue color. It blends in a blends, little bit. Blends in better. Like a baby blue or something. Mm -hmm. The light, light blue. Light blue. It's lit up for aircraft. Uh, for, it, we don't have to, don't have to. FAA is up to yeah. uh, 199 and above for red light. So 100 feet, this is, uh, we just have to register with I was just going to say Julie. ASR. It's like a, a beacon. And then that's home. the other good thing about not having the flag on it, because then you have to light it, light up the tower. Right. Okay. Uh, let's, let's and even, um, well, even what Len, Janice, and Tom are working out with, and Julie, the design they did with the parking, the walkover, 
really good idea, I will say that. You know, it's great when the government, hey, let's do, if you're going to do something, do it right once, right? What they're doing is truly changing this area to really use it for everyone, you know? Um, I don't know. We're, we're, we're still working on the plans, and we haven't. But one, <laughs> oh, okay, once, once we finalize them, we're going to present them to everybody. It, it, it's just that this is the the, the business end of it. Nice. This impressed. is the business. <laughs> this is the business end, and then once we kind of come with a working it's good document, we'll that. I just lo I just loved how they did that. I was like, this is great, you know. Right. <laughs> well, like you know, right? Like Nick and Tom's office worked with um, Julie Lofstad and Len to at least lay it out in yep. a way that would be uh, appreciated by. The users, groups. yeah, particularly the commercial fishing mm -hmm. companies that stretch their nets out, or they've been looking for more storage and refrigerated trucks and things like that, pack out ramps. So we're trying to provide the infrastructure that the commercial fishing industry needs, but also sort of a separate space for the public you know, in a paved parking lot where we can generate some more revenue to help offset the cost of operating this facility and keeping our uh, the rates down for our commercial fishing fleet. Because we want to make sure that it's affordable to them. In, in, in this parking lot? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're thinking paid parking lot in this? Or it's just a quarter of it expanding would, that parking would lot. be paid, yeah. yeah so that's what we haven't heard yet. Right. Yeah, okay. We're okay. Gonna well, I'm I, I know that. that. We'll okay. get that. I'm going to, we'll get that at another session and I'll, yeah, okay. I'll lay that whole plan yeah, out. Be like so I'm glad they're here. The commercial fishermen, they, they put their gear in the Parking we're spots. Working, and, we're you know, they've got an organization there, and we don't may not have a lot of daily parking where people can pay for the day. This will be all auto fully automated, where you you come and register <laughs> on an app. Yeah. And with an app, you do need um, cell phone service. So we're dealing with another village that wants them to do smart parking, and they realized we can't do smart parking without good cell phone service. Yeah. So. <laughs> Now we, we're back <laughs> in front of them again, you know, explaining this, you know. So, and Julie, just so you know, if I, I'll send you the drawings after this. But if you, if that, if the hundred foot to the bulkhead's too close, we can work even move it back a little bit, so it's a little bit. Okay, thank just you. So the commercial fishermen. Yeah, just so it doesn't hit the bulkhead. Or the bulkhead. Yeah, so. If in the unlikely I mean, event. Exactly. That feet's huge, you know. But we need to move it another 10 feet. Janice? Contract steps, but we'll have to do that in a second. A question for you. Um, how does this play into our plans to try to increase the bandwidth along Dune Road for the auto automated beach parking and all of that? Helps. That yeah, this yes. helps. But that's, okay. th that, that dovetails in here because the, okay. the, the, the automated parking that we have at Punk Log and all our other beaches that we're doing a pilot this year. Right. So, uh, so once that's fully operational, everybody's going to be on their phone. Yeah. That's how it's going to work. Carriers so, like ever you, know, you, need, fiber? you need cell service. Uh, I Again, it could uh, be okay today, be variety, but it's not going to be okay once that's all operational. It's actually the transmission of data relative to the park ground. that fiber. parks need to have uh, that. Well, but I think there's it could be, fiber it could be out there, or it, it might end right at Um That would be on the fiber map. I can get you that answer. But that would be brought. Oh, yeah, yeah we would yeah. bring the fiber. So, so there's be full fiber, fiber optics be, being yeah. brought down the, to yeah. the road by doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wouldn't go to the west, though. It would be going to the site. So right, right, to the yeah. site. But you can, you can do it wirelessly, too. So that's the whole point of that, right? So I just don't know where the what the bandwidth is for that pro this project. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, a, uh, if the carriers want to do a, um, a relay to the tower yeah. instead of yeah. running fiber, exactly. uh, they yeah, prefer that's not to. At, uh, yeah. at Overlook Beach, we have that. Yeah. It goes over to uh, Town Hall. They're uh, probably going to, like the saying is, they're going to pull fiber off the cable. Yeah. So that's the that's the, the source into the that's network. That's more resilient, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, even a uh, heavy rainstorm can really mess up that, even that yeah. relay. So they do prefer to be a hard line, right? Well, one can back up the other because this can go <laughs> underwater, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not if it's 100 feet underwater, you know. <laughs> we're all in trouble. Yeah, we're we all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> more than let's see, year 20... Need a boat. 79? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> 2079 is going to be 100 feet underwater. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say it. It'll be underwater. <laughs> underwater. No, well, we're going to reverse global warming. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're working towards. Uh, are there other documents, other yeah, visuals uh, that we want to look at? Next, next slide. Over. 
Uh, this does show the whip antenna, so um, this one will have it. This one will have the whip antennas. And you say for Southampton Andrews, not for Hampton Bays? Andrew hints, uh, said Southampton Fire District. Probably get to the end and of And then the road. volunteer Southampton Ambulance Company. Is that correct? Probably mm -hmm. get to do road. To reach the end. There's mm -hmm. Southampton Volunteer Ambulance. There There's is. also Southampton Village Volunteer Ambulance. Okay. And so yeah, everything out on Dune Road, the east of the lane? canal. Yeah. There's no service east of the canal. That's not called Dune Road, but uh, well, well, Metal Lane. Metal Lane. Metal Lane. Yeah. So and they want this service out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, Makes sense. Uh, and the next slide. <laughs> so, you know, Julie, like I said, we could even, if it's the 100 feet for the commercial fishery, that's too, you know, too tight for comfort. You know, the town move it even more, a little more south. You know, you know. Next one. Yeah, next one. That's kind of just showing where we own. Next. That's how we got Got almost every state. Yeah, we, we got one recently in New Hampshire too. Okay. The, the rents out there aren't as good. Uh, Long Island's a sweet spot. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dense. And I mean, and the government, you know, sometimes difficult to work with. <laughs> Just easy. <laughs> really, <laughs> well, we, we can be dense as well. Is that what you meant by dense? Yeah. Difficult to work with. Be <laughs> 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 cold to work. Uh, and it's well. all cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and dense. Yeah. Just really dense. And difficult. So uh, the process, um, we we wanted to show you the. Um, conceptual ideas here. They're, they've given us a letter of intent to do this work. There are some uh, contractual issues that we need to discuss in executive session. Mm -hmm. um, because we, there is like an overlying agreement with another provider. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with that. So we need to talk about that and, mm -hmm. and the steps necessary to move through the contractual process. So I, I wanted to get through this session so that you kind of saw what we're talking about and then Perhaps the next time we, we can get in an exec session, we'll go through the what we need to do to move this along. Well, we're going to end after this and go into executive session. If you want to do that, we, we can do it today for a short period. I, I, I talked to Mark about this earlier in the day, and he's got some kind of filing that's due that he's swamped with. That okay. He, he's not available. Okay. Yeah, because this and he's is the one that's our, he's been handling. That's yeah, he's oh. the contract. I'm familiar with the is issue. Mark on there? No. I'm just saying it's a long. If you have a long agenda, I, I know I'm scheduled to be in there at two, I think. So, mm -hmm. but there may be some yeah, procedural you're, you're steps we have to take to clear any yes. potential. Yes. Yeah, and I want to go through that in detail so everybody knows yeah. the steps. Good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? For so conceptually, you want to so you potentially think about which height you are comfortable with, and so that they can revise anything. You know, well, it sounds like the transfer forward. station, you can do 120 and later on go to 140 if you need to. So that's that seems like a no-brainer okay. to build it at 120. And, and this one, you said you got to go to 100. I was hoping it would be less, but... Maybe do 80, and then you can always yeah, we'll do 120. Uh, I'm going to talk... I'm going to really have Andrew get the exact height. You're going to drill down a little. Um, let's, let's there's other ways around it, right? If we get to... Say if we do 80, they, they might say, all right, can we put... Um, if they truly need like 90 something feet, they might put a 10 foot whip antenna with a relay on top, right? So it will be a taller whip antenna on top. There's ways around it. Um, and I'll talk with Andrew about how to really nail that down. Yeah, I think starting out personally, you know, the policy is still like lower and right. more distributed than one giant. No, we have large. seen with um, cell towers in the past that we. You know, often see community opposition. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that these two sites, we don't see that, but you just never know. So uh, is, you know, we're having this work session. It puts it out there that the board is, is looking to do this. You know, I, my experience is that everybody wants better cell service, but they don't want cell towers. They, they don't, there's a disconnect there. Obviously. You can't have one without the other. Exactly. And, you know, we always say this, you know, 
uh, since COVID, even since Sandy, a lot has changed. You know, people are on their phone. People are way more remote now, right? Yep. Um, there's always going to be an NIMBY, you know, not my backyard. That doesn't represent everyone, but they always scream the loudest. Um, good thing for you guys, they get to yell at us, <laughs> and partially you guys, but uh, we'll handle, you know, the public and, and educating okay. them. Another thing is when they hear cell tower, they think a massive cell tower, even like the Coast Guard Tower right next to right. Power Park Bridge. Then you really show them it, and they're like, oh, all right, that's... <laughs> the money. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little different than what, you know, they visualized. So. Have you ever done... Uh, Maybe this is silly, but have you done an osprey nest on top of one of these things? <laughs> right. So, because we have a lot of kind of osprey yeah. nests. <laughs> we have an osprey at Terrible Fire. And then we have a lot of bald eagles these days coming now. They're coming back. So, we actually don't want them up there, but we can't do anything when they go up there. Um, and it's actually corrosive to yeah. be out there. Really? Yeah. And, and it's have dangerous. The and top's open, the all the fiber. They, yeah. But even like our tower manufacturer sent us like a 15,000 like bird deterrent system. Okay. And I was just looking at this, and I was just like, look, uh, cousin's a farmer, and he just has an owl on a, on a pole. I'm like, all I need to do is get a, go to Walmart and put an owl on top of that <laughs> yeah. tower instead well, of spending $20,000. We love our osprey. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do. I, I have a uh, uh, tower yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Croton on Hudson, so and every year they yeah. come yeah. back. Oh, and the top oh, yeah. carrier every year uh, has we'll such well, problems as they, so they cause problems during the migration period, they can't go up there. And uh, so every you year, know, I'm like, you. guys, you need to get your act together if you want to, you know, work yeah. on the tower. But yes, it's crazy how large the branches are. Oh, yeah, they build a massive nest. Yeah. yeah. So we're, me and Laurel said we're going to just be buying like the $20 owls, and when they're <laughs> putting everything up, we're going to zip tie it to the top and hope that works. So. But <laughs> it pro they wanted me. I actually the the top carrier was Sprint, and then they, you know, uh, got bought out by T-Mobile and. Well, stuff. So they took down their, they're taking down their antennas, and uh, the village's question was, can you keep the platform up there for the Ospreys? Mm. <laughs> there you are. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank Good you, guys. Today. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank okay. you, everybody. Ms. Thank you. Oh, Julie, did you want to say something? Yeah, one minute. Oh, one minute. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Julie Lofstad, Hampton Bays. I'm here on behalf of the commercial fishermen. I just have three quick comments. Um, that we've kind of touched on. One is the fall zone. Um, if you can get me those numbers um, from the cell phone tower to the bulkhead, that would be great. And then when you guys decide how high it is, we can comment then. Um, also, any liability. I know in the unlikely event that a cell phone tower will kink or bend or whatever, um, just that any boats, vehicles, gear will be covered by the town or the cell tower company. Um, and Tommy John brought up about um, wind resistance. How about storm surge resistance? Because during Hurricane Sandy, there was a big storm surge. So I'd like to know about that. Um, yeah, so that will be with the foundation. They'll, um, that, when they engineer the tower for the storm surge, that will be. Because when the storm surge happened, all the sand from the ocean came and pushed onto the parking lot. It was probably 8 to 10 feet of sand that eventually ended up on the parking lot. <coughs> and just the last point that I think Jay brought up um, it, for the future bigger project, just no loss of space for the fishermen for parking, storage, and dragging or nests around. That doesn't necessarily have to do with the cell tower, but just for the project in general. And uh, just so <coughs> if, um, everyone is additionally insured when we build these towers, so property and et cetera. Okay. That's part of it. Uh, carriers carry minimum of like $10 million. That's per right. carrier, so yeah. Okay. So if you're fully loaded up, we're dealing with almost 40, realistically sometimes like 60, 70 million in liability insurance. Okay. So. Okay. Sounds good. Thank good. you. Thank you for inviting me today. Thank you, Thank you Jim. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Um, any anyone else? All right. We'll conclude this. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Nice to see you guys. Bye-bye, Janice, thank you for your help with the... Uh, Fish coming in soon? The hate up resolution. Oh, shit. Is that good? Or you need... Fine. Right. Everybody's okay with it. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, there, was, there was a resolution about... I, don't know, I think we resolved that about eight affordable housing units in Noyak. Uh, but I think it's a private development. Oh, for credits? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, but they're all affordable? All affordable, so we the have the entire 
the entire unit. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. The ones they're talking about, yeah, the two buildings with the units in them, and then there's the house, and that's not. But the multifamily component is all affordable. It's all affordable. Yeah, okay. which is amazing for yeah. That would be a very good thing. That is awesome. Yeah. It's needed up there, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's very good. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Um, let's see. Updates. It's 12.15 already. I think Janice puts updates off. So. Oh, yeah. okay. So we, yeah, we don't have updates. I right, find. Um, well, can I just quickly? Mm -hmm. Monday at 1 o'clock at Good Ground Park is the unveiling of the Hometown Heroes Banner Program. Right. We have three events, right? We have three events. Yeah. Um, Summer news that. conference, the ribbon cutting for the water crossing, and then the Hometown Heroes Banner Program. Mm -hmm. That's Monday? Monday. Uh, I will be bringing my daughter back from college. We'll do a moment of we'll do a moment of silence on Tuesday for Laura Masterson, yeah. um, wife of Bill Masterson, former highway superintendent, who um, passed away May 12th. So we'll, we're not going to do the moment of silence today, but we'll we'll incorporate it into our moment of silence next week. Um, I don't have uh, you know we can hold off on any other updates unless somebody has something something kind sensitive. Yeah, I do. Okay. Just uh, to inform the board that uh, this week the town of East Hampton uh, changed their their incoming helicopter routes back to the November route, and that affects the entirety of Southampton. Uh, whereas helicopters will it, going to East Hampton Airport, um, they go along the South Shore and they turn north at Hampton Bays. Uh, they fly over Tuckahoe-Shinnecock. They go to Robbins Island and then in through North Sea, Noyak, Sag Harbor, into East Hampton Airport. Uh, for the past year, uh, the helicopters have been using uh, the Sierra route, which is the south route over Wainscot. The people there, understandably, I suppose, were really uh, unhappy. And the helicopters would come in and out and travel the southern route out over the ocean. And that's been, um, it's been quiet. So uh, that, you know, this change uh, is a change back. Um, it affects the entire town. Very often, helicopters will take the northern route right along the North Shore transition down over West Hampton to get into the into over the Atlantic and then turn back up at Hampton Bay so we're going to be seeing a lot more helicopter traffic uh, than we did in 2022 and um, you know I, I just I'm, I'm well, unhappy they, they to see this they change mix it up. I mean, well well they do they, 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 they East have to ask you for any input the, the <laughs> not unless anyone here has it, not not <laughs> to me uh, the exit is they over the Sierra it. route, which is to the south, over East Hampton Town and out into the Atlantic. But the approach now is is the November route. We're familiar with this November route. This is the one that existed in 2021, 20 earlier. Uh, this is the route that changed from uh, the November route used to go over the North Fork, uh, over North Sea, Noyak, Sag Harbor into East Hampton. But then they changed the November route to reflect a southern entrance to go up over Hampton Bays uh, into the Peconic Bays and then into um, East Hampton. Uh, so I, I would like East Hampton Town to change it back. Well, we should send them a letter. We should send them a letter. Um, You're going to get phone calls. Yeah, already, already, oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, uh, why don't we work on a letter to uh, East Hampton Town? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> At the very least, right. We have, do we have a separate council on airport issues, Jim? Right. For the we seat. have consulted um, with one of our the environmental council, Beverage and Diamond has oh. done work with us before and some of the landfill issues or whatnot. We, we did we t um, did have we them think? involved with, this, with the East Hampton Airport issue for a little bit. Because they're going through some CEQA process as well, oh. trying to... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> implement restrictions that um, we understand why, but we also have to look at the traffic impacts and the impacts to West Hampton. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, if you recall, the, we this, did. We the secret is designed to change the airport to a prior permission airport. Right. That's yeah. The they did it changes. without it at first, and then the courts told no. Right. Judge Bates right, said no. Should, you have to have. The we secret. should be an interested party. Yeah. In that, I. 
haven't really seen anything in terms of scoping sessions. I haven't, I haven't seen anything. I haven't, I haven't seen anything yet. Um, they did request traffic uh, reports, mm -hmm. some studies so that we did in the I West saw. Hampton area. Um, you know, I saw so that you one and we sent that to over. the planning department, but um, I feel like if they're going through a CEQA process, mm -hmm. we should be an involved agency. Or yeah, no, they, I totally agree, but there doesn't seem to be and communication. I haven't seen a scoping document for that. And maybe we else. need yeah. to we'll, have we'll, counsel we'll involved. To see. We'll, we'll let to see if, if they have sent that anything but um, we have had candidates uh, if you recall we spoke with uh, and they spoke at a, a sex session of council at beverage and diamond steve gordon and his partner who spoke with us about the options when we was talking about what was happening over at the east hampton airport um, they essentially told us to kind of you know kind of sit still until they did recommend that it, they, they thought they had to do a full eis and and the courts did agree with that analysis, and uh, so that's where they are now. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll check to see if, if any kind of scoping documents has been set out. I haven't seen any, and if we need to, uh, yeah, with them, we can do bringing that. in special counsel on this issue, I think, would be helpful. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, yeah and, and they've been good. Just they have follow the process because it's a, it's an East Hampton process, and we need. You know, a, right. a watchdog. Yeah, we're, we're very aware that whatever they do there could impact us. You know, we're sort of, we're, well, we're sort of on two fronts, right? I mean, we have the issues that face our eastern town that are directly impacted by what happens at the East Hampton Airport, and then we have well, you know, what happens there could impact the western town. Yeah, not even just the western portion of town. It could also impact the eastern portion of the town. Mm -hmm. Any fl changes of flight pattern. It absolutely. is now. Sure, absolutely. Well, yeah. the, you know, the county forms the a new committee, but they meet once a year kind of thing um, for local Kabreski residents. So I, there doesn't seem to be much clout in that. Um, we had a lot more helicopter traffic last year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's very East noticeable. And East mm -hmm. But there, the, you know, there's no way to communicate from, from that standpoint. And I think it has to be you know, <clears throat> municipality to municipality. One of the things that we did in, in our committee last year, which we're going to get back together, is we looked at the flights, where they're going. And I maintain a third of East Hampton helicopters are flying over the western part of Southampton Town. Yeah. You, you just don't know where the helicopter is going. And, you know, I'm a little weird like this. I, I, I watch them, not every day, but, you know, they do transition over the western part of the town. So we're seeing helicopters in and out of Gabriski, which is, uh, it, it is, um, it's a bigger airport. They have more operations. Uh, they get about anywhere from six, around 60,000. It's dropped down a little bit. Uh, flight operations it, in and out of Gabriski and uh, East Hampton is about 30,000. So and they, but they also have different, they also have different flight paths available to them that they don't find. So Gabriski in particular can have Air, aircraft coming from lots of different directions, and it's very hard for anybody to tell them, you know, that, and that's one of the issues. So when we get calls, you, know, you there's really no way to react. Yeah, my husband always asks, he's like, they're helicopters. He goes, why can't we make them just go straight up, <laughs> higher than they're going, and then travel out? Because they're, they're not, they're not, they're not controlled the way fixed wing air fuel. Yeah, they're just, they, they don't have to file flight plans. They don't have to do a lot of stuff that fixed wing aircraft have yes, to do. And then a lot of them have been flying so low. Yeah. And they can legally. Yeah. You know, if, they're, if there's a reason, then it's pretty easy to find a reason. I think it depends on what, you know, where the cloud cover is. And if there's a lot of air traffic in the area. Oh, it, all sorts of reasons. They're, they're pretty much free to go where they, you know, want okay. to go. Unless I mean, that's not totally <coughs> fair, but, you know, that's the way it seems. And they're wild as to be. All right. Um, thank you, Kelsman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we should work on a letter. Oh. Yes. Janice, can we put something together? <laughs> yes. Okay. Maybe a call. No, no, we need to be official. We need something in writing. Yeah, but I mean... Just if they're changing their routes... To one that's going to put a lot of helicopter traffic off the Port Hampton base. Well, there's there's that's a lot of reasons, it. different pressures to change routes. So that's something we should find out. 
you yeah. know, where that came from. Yeah, because their uh, South Fork residents don't want to hear it. Yeah. I can tell you where it <laughs> came your from. Answer. It, <laughs> the inbound and, and outbound <laughs> flights were going over Wainscot. 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 And I don't want to put it necessarily it just on that on that hamlet, but they it's, it's a lot of flights going over a particular area, and we're going to find it. It's a lot of so flights going to go have, over. They have the outbound going over so they have the outbound, and, and we have the inbound. East Hampton Airport literally borders our our borderline, our eastern, you know, sure. the runway points at Southampton Town. Mm -hmm. Sure, so right. If they fly high, high enough over. All right. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have an executive session. Uh, we can take a, a short break, but 1 o'clock, I guess, we'll reconvene for executive session. We have confidential legal advice, contract contracts, personnel, acquisitions, litigation, we have quite a full executive session. So I'll make a motion to end our work session and go into executive session on those items. Second. Um, seconded by uh, Councilman Bouvier, all in favor? Aye. Aye.